I'm going to call this uh, meeting on May 20th of 2021 of the Bloomington Environmental Commission to order. Uh, we'll start with roll call, starting with Sam Armstrong. Present. Here. Matt Caldy. Here. Don Eggert. Daniel Gonzalez. Here. A Andrew, I'm going to have to leave for a minute. Okay, that's fine. I am here. Mike Litwin. Present. Dave Parkers. Yo. Par Corey Ray. Scott Shackelford. Oh, Corey's here. Sorry, couldn't get on meter oh. fast enough. No problem. Scott Shackelford. Dedania Whitney. Okay, we do have a quorum to proceed with the meeting this evening. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, introduction. Since we do have guest speakers this evening, we will do introductions. Um, in reverse order from how we did roll call. So Corey, you're up first. Just a brief introduction, who you are, what you do, why you're on the commission, that sort of thing. Did you say Corey? Sorry, my yeah, audio yes. broke up a little bit. Hello, uh, my name's Corey Ray and let me start my video. Just notice that's the wrong two. My name's Corey Ray and I am the chair of the Outreach Working Group Subcommittee Group. Um, I am new to the commission. I was appointed a few weeks back um, by the city council. And uh, yeah, in my day job, I am a legislative coordinator with Sierra Club uh, statewide for Indiana. So I'm really happy to be here. Been super excited to work with everybody so far. It's been great. And just to see all the great uh, plans we have going forward, I you know, could, don't think I could have made a better decision of where I'd want to be. So yeah, thank you for Perfect. that. Thanks, Corey. We're glad to have you. Uh, Dave? Well, what should I say? I retired from SPIA Environmental Science 15 years ago. Um, I'm a mathematical plant physiologist of sorts and lots of other things. And when I have to say, write on a form, who's my employer, I say, my garden. <laughs> Perfect. Mike? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Mike Litwin, uh, I am retired eight years now from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I've been on the Environmental Commission for a long time and seen several different directors and uh, environmental specialists. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Andrew Gunther. I'm the chair of the Bloomington Environmental Commission. Um, I've been on the commission since 2018 and served as chair for three years now, um, or going on three years. This is my third term. Um, before that, I served on the Monroe County Environmental Commission. Um, currently, I am a master's of environmental sustainability uh, student at the O'Neill School. Um, so I uh, am, am excited to start doing that coursework starting next month. Um, moving on to Daniel Gonzalez. Hi, um, I'm a master's of public affairs student at the O'Neill School and uh, excited to be here. Thank you, Daniel. Matt Caldy. My name is Matt Caldy. I'm a commissioner. I've been on the commission for four years now and just a uh, concerned citizen. Perfect. And Sam. Hey, my name is Sam Armstrong. Uh, I am a student at IU studying environmental and sustainability studies, and I also work for a local environmental restoration firm, Oiko, in town, and uh, I was appointed to this commission earlier this year. Thank you, Sam. Uh, moving on then from introductions, unless there's anyone who joined in the meantime who I missed. I'm just going to scroll through and make sure I didn't miss anyone. Excellent. Um, we will move on then to approval of minutes. Everyone should receive a copy of the. Did we hear from Kara? I is Kara a new commissioner? I did not receive uh, notice of a new commissioner. I'm just a visitor. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we'll move on to approval of minutes. Um, everyone should receive the minutes from the April meeting um, for 2021. Did anyone have any amendments to offer for those minutes? I move we accept. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second. All right. We'll go do down the roll. Sam? Yay. 
Matt? Yes. Daniel? Yes. I vote yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Corey? Yes. Excellent. Passes unanimously. Excellent. Moving on then in the agenda to public comment, um, we open public comment to any member of the public who wishes to speak on any item either on or off the agenda. Um, we have a limit of a total of maximum five minutes per person, 20 minutes total for public comment this evening. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to speak this evening? If so, they can either raise their hand or they can raise their hand in the, in the Zoom chat function um, or message us in the chat and we'll let you know and uh, unmute you. I'm seeing no members of the public. Ben, am I correct in that? Yes, I'm not seeing any members. Excellent. Uh, with that, public comment period is closed for this evening. Um, we'll move on to the next item in our agenda, which are presentations. Um, our first presentation this evening is from Sherry Mitchell Brooker. She is the chair of Friends of Lake Monroe, and she's here to discuss grant recommendations uh, by the EC for Friends of Lake Monroe. So, uh, Sherry, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us this evening. Oh, Sherry, you are still muted. You're muted. Okay, sorry. Um, thanks so much for having me. And um, I have to share that I am also retired and also um, a former student at SPIA. I did my master's and my doctorate at SPIA and Dave was my instructor for part of that time, my professor. So um, I just uh, feel like I'm right at home with everyone here. <laughs> And it's great to see so many people from SPIA all over the community doing good work. Um, let's see, I need to share my screen. Uh, I gotta get the host to say okay. Also, who's ever the host, can they also make me a host so I can record and put it on Facebook after? Yeah, I think Sam, I think you were accidentally made host um, if you could make Ben the host, that'd be fantastic. And then um, and whoever gets there first can let Sherry share her screen. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I didn't realize I was just the host. And I just noticed at the top that Linda was waiting to be admitted. And I just admitted her. So uh, I apologize for that. And No, no problem at all. Um, I, will, I might need some direction on how to change the host very quickly. Um, I, I'm, I'm back. I think the Damien needs to be let in. Okay, we were having a problem setting the meeting host, so we're working on that real, real quick. Uh, Sam, you can click on like the three dots in the top right corner of my box. Okay. And then I should say like make him the host or something like that. Make host. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. Great. Thanks for that. Sorry, Linda. And Sherry, you should be all set. And then I don't see Dedamia's name coming up, unfortunately. OK. Um, with that, Sherry, the floor is yours. OK. So um, I'm here to talk with you about Friends of Lake Monroe and our project uh, in watershed management planning and water quality protection for the lake. Um, let's see, I guess I need to minimize that or you will see all that. Okay. Um, so a quick update on the watershed management plan. This was a 27 month project funded by um, Indiana Department of Environmental Management under the 319 program, which is federally funded. And um, uh, that project is now 70% complete. The project was designed to um, uh, update our information about the lake with an um, intensive water quality monitoring, and then to develop a watershed management plan that includes uh, an action plan for uh, um, improvement in uh, the watershed. So that includes education and outreach. We still have a little of the education and outreach to do because of COVID. We are doing things this summer that we would have done 
last summer. Um, all of the data is now 100% complete. So we've uh, gotten um, monthly samples at the uh, main tributaries. We've had two sampling blitzes with uh, 100 sites, over 100 sites sampled. And that was done by volunteers, citizen scientists who we had uh, over 70 for each of those fall and spring events. Um, we're now in the data analysis and action plan phase. So um, uh, this summer, we will be looking at the water quality data. Dave Parkhurst has been um, very helpful in um, working with us on, on that as part of our um, monitoring team. Uh, we are, yeah. And then we have uh, to, once we've looked at that data, we need to develop a draft action plan. And that action plan will include uh, what we want to do and where we want to do it how we're gonna get money for it, and how it addresses the um, problems and, that, and issues that were brought up early on. And then we want to continue building on our community collaborations. And we had two um, community forums uh, during this grant period, one with uh, in Bloomington and one in Brown County, and both had about over 70 uh, citizens participating. So um, the action plan will, um, that we're going to build this summer will have voluntary measures. Um, it will address all sorts of different land uses, including agricultural, forested, residential, and commercial, potentially. And um, the important thing is that what we decide to do has to have a measurable impact. For example, if we say we're going to do um, some shoreline erosion protection, then we need to estimate how many tons of sediment would be um, not be entering the lake, that type of thing. So, and measurable impact in terms of outreach can be the number of people that we contact uh, and so forth. Uh, so that will be education and training will also be part of our action plan. The next step after we have our action plan put together is the implementation of the action plan. And so we will be applying for a 319 grant for implementation at the end of August, beginning of September of 2021. So um, that is a little earlier than we would like, but because there's a long delay between applications applying and actually getting the grant, we're moving our action plan up to meet that schedule. Uh, January 2022 is when we will publish our final watershed management plan. And then um, hopefully in November of 2022, we would receive a implementation grant. Some of the potential projects that we're looking at for uh, water quality improvement in Lake Monroe include um, uh, work with the Sycamore Land Trust. We've been having discussions with them about the Amy Weingartner Granigan Peninsula, which has had some severe erosion issues and um, is a very good place to start looking at um, uh, techniques for preventing shoreline erosion and also a very public place so that the public is aware of what we're doing. Another potential project um, that we've talked with the U.S. Forest Service about, who's your national forest, is in the Charles Dean Wilderness area. The peninsula uh, has had extensive erosion and their concerns um, about losing arche archaeological artifacts. And so um, they have put in a, um, and received funding, I believe, for a feasibility study to um, help design a um, implementation project to reduce erosion. And um, that is another project that we're looking at. Also, and this one is very exciting to me, um, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources leases land around the lake to farmers for um, crops. 
And so there are some parcels along the north and south forks of Salt Creek that are currently leased as farmland, but are frequently flooded. And so they haven't been able to plant in the last couple of years. And the DNR is interested in converting those areas to either riparian forest or forested wetland. And the fact that they're already frequently flooded makes them great uh, potential for uh, uh, forested wetland. Another project that we're looking at is at the Brown County Fairgrounds. Um, the Fairgrounds is located on Greasy Creek, which has had issues with E. coli. And there is um, a lot of activity during the fair and before the fair with um, horses and so forth. And um, so this project would, I think is one that was uh, the National um, Conservation, NRCS, National Resource Conservation Service um, had proposed, but it also might have been Soil and Water Conservation District at Brown County. They work very closely together. And um, this would have livestock exclusion fencing, um, heavy use area protection, and a riparian buffer. And again, this is a very public area, so the public would be seeing this and understanding what is happening and how, why we are doing this. Another potential project is in Brown County State Park, um, looking at horse manure management in the horse camps. Uh, that uh, can be quite an issue in terms of manure going into the waterways. So what I am most concerned about at this point in time is um, getting community support for the implementation grants. And so I'm gonna talk briefly about Lake Monroe's significance, its value, the importance of having continuity in our watershed coordinator um, commitment uh, to the um, restoration efforts and ask for support from the city of Bloomington. Um, so this is what we need. Um, there will be a gap in between the time that if we get funded, the in between the time the first grant ends and the next grant begins. And so between February 2022 and um, the beginning of November 2022 would be a period where we would not have funding for our watershed coordinator. That funding has come from the 319 grant, but actually was matching funds that came from the city of Bloomington and Monroe County. So that amount is nine months at 4,133 a month, and that equals $37,197. And we would be asking the city of Bloomington and um, Monroe County to share that cost. Um, further, we are requesting that once again, the city of Bloomington and Monroe County provide watershed coordinator funding as a match for our 319 implementation grant. And that grant would move from November 2022 to October 2024. And that will be 24 months of salary at $4,133 a month. And that would be $99,192. Again, split between the um, city and the county is what we're asking for. So what I'm asking you for is support. And I'll be talking with the mayor later um, next week. And I would like to have your support um, and and communicate it to the mayor that this is an important um, project that, that uh, deserves local funding. Um, uh, we're, I'm looking for a cash match because I think it really helps our um, possibility of gaining a uh, grant. It shows local commitment to the project. Uh, also, um, it shows the uh, support of our volunteer effort. All of our um, board is volunteers. Much of what we do uh, is done with volunteer work, except for that work that's done by the watershed coordinator. And so it's important that our volunteers see that the community appreciates and supports our efforts. Um, also, it's 
If we look back into the past, previous efforts to form a watershed group have failed due to the lack of a sustained local commitment. So one of the things that I'm really focusing on is that sustainability of our organization and the effort to uh, uh, keep Monroe uh, Lake as clean as we can. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that uh, most watershed coordinators under the 319 program have one or more projects that they're working on, mostly multiple projects, and they tend to move from one project to the next, from one uh, area, you know, town to the next or um, site to the next. And we have been very fortunate in finding a very good watershed coordinator who is willing to devote a full-time effort to the Lake Monroe and our 319 uh, grant. And um, so that person is developing relationships that foster collaboration. And Maggie Sullivan, our current watershed coordinator, has done an absolutely wonderful job of that. Um, also, if we're able to keep the same watershed coordinator from one grant cycle to the next, that watershed coordinator develops a knowledge base which is specific to Lake Monroe. So if somebody wants to know about um, what are the rules about, you know, uh, um, oh, core, you know, developing on the land or something, you know, this is a person that will know what is the problems with the harmful algal blooms. This watershed coordinator is the person who knows. Uh, so the longer that we have that person in one person in that position, the deeper that knowledge base is. Um, it's also very hard to get a long-term or full-time commitment from watershed coordinators. So we're extremely lucky in that we have had that and hope to keep that into the future. And also then this action plan implementation, which I talked about the different possible projects that would we, we would be implementing, um, definitely requires a watershed coordinator. No, there goes my phone. Just a minute. <laughs> so um, I'm proposing to you that uh, we fund the watershed coordinator during this gap between the grants and that that funding is split between Monroe County and the city of Bloomington, that we commit watershed coordinator funding as a match for the 319 for the next two years after the gap, and that that funding would be granted up to the full amount and reduced appropriately if the grant is not awarded. Your support is vital to our success, and our success is vital, I believe, to our community. So I really want to thank you for allowing me to um, speak with you today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Sherry, for that presentation. We thank you again for coming this evening. Um, does, do any members of the commission have any questions for Sherry this evening or comments or concerns? Not a question, but I will move maybe during new business that we support the idea of the city uh, spending this money to uh, support the work they're doing. But that's probably new business, right? Yep, that would be, I would, I would say so. Um, anyone else have anything they want to jump in and add? Take a bite at the apple. Uh, Sherry, I had a question. Oh, Sam, there you go. Yeah, Sherry, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, in your own words, what exactly um, is a watershed coordinator? Uh, and um, would their uh, detail change slightly between what Maggie is doing now and when um, there's like a fully funded full-time coordinator coming on board? Well, Maggie is a fully funded full-time coordinator right now. And I think the work will differ just in the fact that we will be moving out of the planning phase and into the implementation phase. So um, 
We've spent a lot of time, Maggie has spent a lot of time making contacts, um, getting to know the you know, different soil and water conservation district players, the Forest Service, you know, all of the different people um, collecting data. Um, she's driven all over the watershed, stopped at every stream crossing practically, and um, I've, I've, it's hundreds of sites that she's you know, reviewed and, and um, to gain an understanding of what's going on on the ground. Um, so now this next phase, during the gap, we expect her to be working more on, on outreach and laying the groundwork for the implementation projects. And then um, as the funding comes in for implementation, she would be coordinating that effort. And along with that implementation will be some outreach. So she will continue to do that, continue to hold public forums and keep the public involved. Yeah, I have another comment. Um, a few weeks ago, Maggie put out a, she's done a very impressive job. I, I agree with Sherry about that. She's uh, trained as an environmental engineer. Um, a few weeks ago, she put out a multi-page document of best management practices for um, agriculture, for forestry, and uh, several other groups of people. And then the idea will be to work with people and try to get them to adopt those best management plans. And I, uh, I think it's a great idea. Linda, I see your hand up. Yes. Uh, so Sherry, specifically um, for the Environmental Commission, do you uh, want, since we can't really give you a cash match, uh, do you want us to write a letter to someone, a support letter? Yes, I, I guess what I would be looking for is um, first uh, a letter to the mayor, because that's who will be, I will be contacting about support from the city. And um, then uh, when we do uh, get to the point of submitting the grant proposal, a letter of support for the proposal. Okay, I'm pretty sure we um, um, provided one of those last time. Yes, you did. And I think the uh, letter should be copied to the city council too. Probably they'll need to support any yes. money coming out. So, you know. Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Anyone else want to bite at the apple? I'm just updating attendance while we do so. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, I'll just jump in, uh, Sherry, to thank you again for coming this evening. Mm -hmm. um, when when would you like the, these letters by? Would you like the since you're meeting with the mayor this week? Do you need that letter ASAP or yes? <laughs> yes? Okay, the better. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the letters um, that we send out from the commission generally come from the chair um, on behalf of whatever vote occurs um, later this meeting to support um, your organization's goals. Um, so I can get that turned around to you and send, just sent to your email, or no, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it to you before I send it to the mayor's office, just so you have a chance to take a look at it. Okay. Um, should the commission pass, you know, the the, the motion, um, but I anticipate we will, um, obviously. So I um, thank you again. I'll open the floor once more to anyone else who wants to take a bite at the apple and ask Sherry anything, or if they have any comments or concerns. And I'm not seeing any. Okay, thank you, Sherry. You're welcome, of course, to stay for the rest of the meeting. Um, or, uh, if you just want to stick, or if you have to go, that's perfectly fine as well. Yeah, I do have to go. I did want to add one more thing, and that's if you want to know, uh, have a more in-depth um, look at what we've been doing. Maggie gave a presentation. She wasn't able to be here tonight um, to the Monroe County Stormwater Board. And that's on CATS, their most recent meeting. So if you want to see a more in-depth presentation about what has been done and what we are proposing, I just had a, a brief summary of that. So um, thank you very much and uh, hope, hope we'll have a good uh, letter coming out. 
Thank you, Sherry. Okay. Um, excellent. So now we will move on to the next item in our agenda, which is um, our next public, our next presentation is from Lauren Travis. She's the Assistant Director of Sustainability for the City of Bloomington. She's here this evening to discuss with us the final draft or the, the final implemented draft uh, of the Climate Action Plan. So, uh, Lauren, the floor is yours. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Whoever's host, can you enable screen sharing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I've made you the co-host, so you should be able to speak. <laughs> Thanks. All right, one second while I pull this up. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Lauren Travis. I serve as the Assistant Director of Sustainability for the City of Bloomington. I haven't had the opportunity to meet all of you, um, but for the last over a year, the city has been working on developing a climate action plan, and I'll discuss a little bit more later about why that is. Um, but this is a presentation that I gave to city council for the acceptance of the resolution. This was April 21st to accept the city of Bloomington's climate action plan as a advisory document for our organization. So the resolution um, was to accept the document as a guidance for city activities and funding priorities. And the importance of accepting versus adopting is that this document and strategic plan is accepted in its entirety, but it doesn't obligate the city to um, enact any of the specific provisions as law. So for those of you that have been paying attention to the Unified Development Ordinance, this is a bit different. Um, why we did this climate action plan was that in previous planning, there was an effort to look to create more of a specific cl community climate adaptation plan by next year and science-based targets. And so also wanted to be responsive to a lot of public outreach about um, an organization around creating a specific emissions reduction timeline and goal that was related to our inventory that we've created in the past. And then some surveying that we did pre-pandemic that indicated that almost 75% of the populace um, that responded to the online survey were very or extremely concerned about how climate change was going to impact and is impacting Bloomington. Of specific concern are things that relate to work that you're doing at the Environmental Commission, including ecosystem loss, um, impacts to tree and plants, and things like availability of clean drinking water. So um, just for a quick background, this is on the tails of a lot of leadership um, that's happened prior to me being part of the city and also um, by other constituents. But back in um, the 2010s or 2006, uh, Mayor Cruzan at the time signed the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement and then later um, after the Paris Accord was passed internationally, we joined the National Climate Action Agenda, which says that basically each city will adopt that guidance as their own and look to see how they can look to reduce their emissions in alignment with that global commitment. Um, back in 2019, as we've been disclosing our emissions and other climate information uh, to a nonprofit organization that does this sort of evaluation for companies and cities gave Bloomington an A rating on all of the different things that we're trying to do around climate leadership. And then the climate vulnerability assessment, which really looked at how specifically Bloomington was going to be affected in terms of infrastructure and potentially affected people and geographic areas in the city. That was back um, last year. And then this uh, occurred in April. So there is a recording also on CATS if you wanna see some of the conversation that council had around this specific resolution and questions that they had. And so basically where we've gone is back um, with the sustainability action plan that was the initial vision for Bloomington sustainability. Then we looked to drill down on where are emissions coming from and what sort of impacts are those gonna have on the climate both locally and more broadly. Then we've been looking to find specific funding opportunities to create progress on climate. So 
over the past year uh, developed new programs like our solar and energy efficiency loan program, which you can find out more about on the economic and sustainable development uh, site. And then this action plan provides further guidance about how to target emissions reduction and become more resilient over time. So just to zoom out, um, what is the goal of the plan? Basically, it is to reduce emissions 25% um, below where they were in 2018 and to become carbon neutral by 2050. So um, this is in compliance with 2018 recommendations from the International Panel on Climate Change and our commitment to keep aligning with Paris Agreement. So 25% may seem um, small, but that, that goal represents a 40% reduction since 2008. So we've slowly been stepping down and it represents a more aggressive pace to reduce emissions in the next decade. Um, this may be of interest to some of you or maybe not, but just to provide some ideas about how each sector that produces emissions have changed over time. Um, these are the different ones that contribute to um, greenhouse gas production. So residential energy has fluctuated over time. Commercial energy is pretty much stable, um, but it's slightly decreased. Government energy, you can see that actually decreasing with the addition of solar and some other efficiency improvements. And then transportation has been slightly increasing. So on the whole, we've had um, emissions reductions, but you can see that each sector is a bit uneven. The good news is that per capita or per person basis, in Bloomington, there are fewer emissions per person, but we're still um, ahead of the national average just because of our fuel sources. And this is just another way to sort of illustrate that. So back in 2008, we were about, about 1.5 um, million metric tons. 2018, there's been a 16% reduction, and then we're looking for a further 25% reduction. And basically what happens is there's going to be a slight decrease just because of technological improvements and efficiency over time, but we, our emissions will not decrease that much unless we specifically implement some structural things from this climate action plan. So the idea of the plan and it's broken down into eight general sectors. The first four are about how we decrease those emissions and those are in the areas that align with where Bloomington produces emissions. So it's transportation, energy in the built environment, waste, water and wastewater. And for water and wastewater in that instance, it's specifically about electricity related to treating water, bringing it from Lake Monroe and um, treating it for drinking water. And then improving climate resilience, which is really important, but more difficult to measure um, is local food and agriculture, health and safety, green space and ecosystem health and climate economy. So. Um, I will dig a little bit into each of those, but you're also um, welcome to follow up with questions afterwards. This plan is um, accepted, it's on the website, but in order to sort of navigate it, you can see that there's goals and then that's, that's a big idea. And then the strategy is how we're gonna get there. So if we wanna decrease the number of miles traveled on Bloomington streets, one strategy will be implementing further opportunities for carpooling and then we have how we'll measure progress, which will be reported every year, and then some co-benefits. So aside from also reducing emissions, improves quality of life, reduces costs for those that are commuting. And then the actions are, um, there's many actions within the plan, but one of them, for instance, would be establishing more EV car sharing locations. And I just wanted to note at this point that this plan was created over the course of over a year with a 27 member advisory team um, community meetings, presentation to council committees, commissions, and then we receive hundreds of public comments. So it's not coming out of a void. It is reflective of other cities' climate action plans as well. So just to explain this, in order to reduce those emissions by 25%, 80% of our effort needs to be within buildings and energy. And that is because our grid is mostly coal-based um, with some natural gas. So that makes it difficult to meet those goals unless we decarbonize those electricity sources. And then we also have some progress to be made in transportation waste and water and wastewater. So uh, there's five main goals in energy and built environment. Um, I won't 
read them to you specifically, but the really the big ideas here are like increasing solar generation, increasing energy efficiency, uh, supporting our utility decarbonization, and then increasing financing financing options for other sectors across the city to work on getting solar and energy efficiency. So the big move in this category will be continuing to accelerate installation of solar PV photovoltaics. So um, while there's been an ongoing support for community members that own homes to um, learn about solar through solar information sessions, we also through some city funding launched this loan and grant program for nonprofits and community institutions. And this is to meet the need because nonprofits are not eligible for the federal tax credit on solar. Um, this creates an additional incentive with the grant that they receive to um, get some of these improvements on their facilities completed. So we have currently eight nonprofits that are going through this program and we hope to scale it up if there's a potential for increased funding. And then we continue to install more solar on city facilities. The two parking garages that have been recently constructed will also have panels and we're looking for more opportunities in other places as well. Transportation and land use, uh, two main goals. One is just really decreasing the number of trips that um, are made in the city and, and moving those towards public transit or shared transit. So um, another is to increase electric vehicle adoption. Um, if vehicles are needed, electric vehicles are less carbon intensive and have less localized air pollution. So there's a picture in Switchyard of one charging site um, that was recently installed with a park and someone's using it. I wanna check that picture. So um, the big idea is reducing single occupancy vehicle use. Uh, we're continuing to build out infrastructure for commute alternatives um, through the transportation plan, looking at municipal fleet electrification. The city bought a couple of fully electric vehicles last year and are looking to phase out any uh, fuel-based vehicle purchases as possible. And then also um, looking at some transportation demand management. There's a lot of uh, demand for uh, single occupancy vehicle use during commute time. So if uh, there's a possibility to shift your commute to being uh, less carbon intensive, that helps reduce pollution across the community. And then uh, third, waste management, uh, really focusing on reducing just solid waste production because that gets uh, transported out of a community and reduce, creates methane gases. And then also educating the public about um, waste diversion and reduction. There's a picture of a composter there. We recently had a um, promotion in conjunction with the Solid Waste District to get more people to consider composting at home. So um, we're looking to increase the organics diversion by looking at other sites for potential um, collaboration with Green Camino Earth Keepers for a drop off. Uh, there are currently drop off sites on a pilot basis at Monroe County Solid Waste District. So uh, anyone that is willing to uh, purchase a subscription for a drop off can um, compost, whether they're in an apartment or otherwise, and drop it off in a variety of different locations wherever it's closest to you. Um, in the last year, we worked on a leaf composting pilot. So working with more neighborhoods to process their leaves on site so that we don't have to pick them up and have them composted elsewhere. And you, that's a very fuel intensive process. And then looking at other opportunities. And then just briefly, since this is um, a small proportion of our emissions, it's really just increasing efficiency and maintaining source drinking water quality, which was a great presentation from Sherry about what's going on um, to try to support that. And I don't have time to jump into every category, although I really recommend checking out the plan and the plan summary, but um, in local food, there's gonna be a new grower owned uh, farm stop opening up in the next month um, that will be open every day of the week. And it will be a model to increase local food access across the community. It'll be called the Rose Hill Farm Stop and there's a website up for that. Um, Utilities is working on a stormwater master plan right now to improve management of increased rainfall across the community. We're looking, uh, Parks is continuing to prioritize public tree plantings and then looking for more opportunities for workforce development for more climate friendly um, workforce opportunities and that is in a variety of sectors as well. 
So that was a lot, but basically the resolution was adopted in April. That's really just the beginning of the next decade of work. So we're going to continue to implement a uh, sustainability action plan and climate action plan initiatives with a particular focus on mitigation, equity, and resilience. We'll continue to engage stakeholders, especially those that you know own properties across the community, businesses, residents, um, and then looking for more opportunities in multifamily units for renters, creating a dashboard to show progress towards these goals that will be available as an educational resource for not only council, but then also residents, and then ultimately hoping to launch an engagement platform that will show people what they can do to be proactive on climate and kind of measure what the more influential actions might be. So other cities like Fort Collins um, have engagement platforms and they'll do initiatives that try to support a pro-environmental behavior and um, that will be kind of the next step for us. So um, there were a lot of different entities and departments, both internal and external that participated in the development of this plan. Won't read them all. And then we also had um, consulting support as well to help the development of the plan. And so we're really excited to get started. To, we're going into the next year's budget process. And as we're um, navigating out of COVID, potentially um, looking towards the next phase and seeing what funding opportunities might be available to accelerate some of these initiatives. But thanks for having me today and just giving a policy update. And I'm going to stop my share. And if anyone has any questions, um, let me know. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns for Lauren? And thank you, Lauren, for that presentation. Yeah, uh, Corey? Course. Yeah, so you said all of that's available on the website then, right? Like every yeah. slide? Okay, just want to make yeah. sure because I was going to request uh, an email of it if it wasn't all on there. Thank you. Yeah, so if you just check out the sustainability page, you can also learn more about that uh, loan and grant program as well on there. And then we have the past reports there. So it's under climate and sustainability reports. Mm -hmm. There's also a copy of the slides that I just showed you on the climate action page. If you want to check those out later. Thank you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I'm not seeing any. Um, thank you, Lauren, for the opportunity to yeah. learn more about the Climate Action Plan. Um, we had a great time amending it, and we were very grateful to see many of our amendments incorporated to the final draft, so yeah. we appreciate your attentiveness there. Um, and we look forward to continuing to work with you and the department uh, mm -hmm. on making Bloomington greener for the future. Yeah, and if you ever want to come and uh, present to the Sustainability Commission, feel free to just reach out and okay. we're happy to hear what you what you guys are up to as well. Excellent. Well, thank you. We'll take you up on that sometime, Lauren. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Excellent. Moving on then to the next item in our general reports from our various boards and commissions. Um, I know we had the Urban Foresters report sent to us via email, but was there additional report from Tree Commission this evening? Um. We had a very short meeting yesterday morning. Um, I guess the main thing that happened is a longtime member, David Dilcher, has retired from the commission, and we had a new member, Jeff Palmer, who's a uh, recently retired biology professor who is now a member. And unrelated to trees, but somebody mentioned, to my surprise, um, at the tree commission that um, Oh, no, this was at a lower, uh, different meeting yesterday afternoon, actually, of the Lower Salt Creek uh, group. Uh, but while I'm on the line, um, three of Bloomington's four Superfund sites are all, all put together because of PCBs are about to be taken off the list of Superfund. I thought that was interesting. One, one of them is going to remain. Maybe you all knew about this, but I didn't. So... That's the tree commission, just not much happening yesterday. Thank you, Dave, for that report. Any questions for Dave on the tree commission report this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Monroe County Environmental Commission. The Monroe County Environmental Commission met um, with Maggie Sullivan from the Lake Monroe uh, watershed. Um, they were discussing the watershed management, the same type of presentation we got this evening, I believe. Um, and then the Monroe County, or the, sorry, the Bloomington Hoosier Resilience Index 
um, was presented to them by Lauren Travis. Um, they just, we just seem to have a lot of speakers in common this month. Um, and then they're talking about a Monroe County Hoosier Resilience Index update um, to work on the broader Monroe County area, not just Bloomington. Um, any questions on the Monroe County Environmental Commission report? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next in our agenda, which is the Bloomington Commission on Sustainability. Does the Commission on Sustainability have a report this evening? Uh, I, yes, I, kind of short. I've been uh, seemingly having a lot of connected connection issues with uh, tonight's meeting, so it's been a little, a little bit rattled, um, or significantly rattled. Um, uh, city their, uh, member and member of the city council uh, spoke first and brought uh, the commission up to date with the ongoing uh, renewal of the uh, um, annexation um, is back, of course, and it's been in the paper. Um, some discussion about uh, things the city's going to have to expand services and uh, to uh, if the um, uh, annexation goes forward. Uh, uh, Christy Lindbergh and uh, Angela Von Roy, mm. Von Roy uh, spoke about their uh, mitigation efforts uh, and uh, their groups then got into discussions about uh, um, their, uh, uh, sub, uh, committees uh, um, get a fair amount of discussion about the uh, uh, <clears throat> transitional housing and housing equity and uh, I guess one of the things that kind of struck me was that one of the statistics they brought up was the um, increase in the poverty rate within Lincoln uh, since uh, 2015. Uh, then there was the discussion of their various other working groups and uh, uh, and there was more. Did you, I, I'm still with you. Yeah, uh, we can still hear you. Okay, uh, it looked like I lost it again there for a second with my uh, connection to the meeting. Um, so you know, again, there were basically uh, discussions of, of function of their their various groups and memberships of the groups, uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, Don. Anyone have any questions for Don on the B Coast report? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Environmental Resources Advisory Council. Uh, is there a report from ERAC this evening? As I've told you before, they meet every other month, and I'm pretty sure I talked about their last meeting at our last meeting. So nothing tonight. Yes, my I always forget which month it was, <laughs> whether it's this month or last month. So thank you, Dave. Um, moving on then to the next commission, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, they had a pretty full agenda. Um, they heard reports from MPO staff um, on the 2022-2026 Transportation Improvement Program, as well as the American Job Plan, the summary of what money Indiana will get um, from that passage of that bill. Uh, then they're talking about um, the 2022-2024 TIP amendments. Um, they're adding in bus stops at two locations for Bloomington Transit, or they're looking at doing so, as well as the acquisition of four 35-foot replacement battery electric EV buses. Um, so that's two exciting uh, opportunities for public transit through the MPO. Um, and that was basically all for their meeting last month. Their meeting next month will be next, this month will be next week. Um, any questions for me on the MPO Citizens Advisory Committee?
Seeing none, we'll move on to the next commission on our agenda, which is Friends of Lake Monroe. Do we have a report from Friends of Lake Monroe this evening, or did the presentation catch us up to date? Well, let me just say that I, I represent the Environmental Commission on the steering committee for the research that Sherry talked about. Um, and we're meeting again, I think, next week. But uh, Sherry gave us an excellent description of where things are at the moment and where we'd like to go. So I don't think I have anything to add. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. Um, then we'll move on to MC Iris. Is there a report from MC Iris this evening? Don, you're uh, muted if you're, uh, you're talking. Muted. I'm sorry about that. Um, kind of a continuation of, of the previous month's meeting uh, discussion of uh, uh, the plants that uh, will be offered if people that uh, remove um, You're fading out, unfortunately. Hmm. Did we lose Don? I think we lost Don for a moment. Um, let's move on, and then if Don... Uh, oh. Pardon? We lost you for a minute, Don. We uh, lost your connection, but um, you're back now, it seems. <sighs> I am very frustrated. I have no... Okay. Um, Don, if you can hear me, I, I think your connection is uh, a little too bad at the moment for the audio to come through. Um, if you'd like to send a summary of the MC Iris report to us via email, if any, everyone finds that agreeable, I think that may be the best path forward. Did you hear what I said, Don? Okay. Let's proceed as though he heard what I said. Um, if no one has any objection, we'll move on to our working group discussion. Um, our active working groups, the first one on the list is ECPC, the Environmental Commission Planning Committee. Um, Linda Thompson um, is our staff liaison. Linda, would you like to uh, discuss ECPC? Certainly. We have uh, three cases this month um, that will be heard at the Plan Commission on June 14th. Um, one is called the District at Latimer Square in the old Kmart site. Um, and one is called the Ark, which is on uh, Gurley Pike. And one is called Tyler Curry, which is on P. Dallas Drive. The um, district at Latimer Square at the Kmart site, we talked about that last month. And um, they have not given any um, uh, revisions, although um, they they may because it's a little questionable whether they'll wind up being on the um, uh, agenda or if they'll be continued again, um, which would be of their own choosing. Um, so there's nothing new to talk about this evening that we didn't talk about last month. The ARC um, is uh, currently <clears throat> there are uh, multiple apartment buildings at this site. Um, on uh, like 12 and a half acres. Um, and the plan is to um, um, demolish all of those um, for, for one uh, multifamily building uh, that'll be, um, uh, it's, uh, let's see here. It'll be for, for students. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here. Um, there will be 235 uh, units with 653 bedrooms, uh, and each of the three buildings will have um, a surface parking lot, um, and there'll be 405 new parking spaces. Um, and um, let's see, the issues so far, and we'll probably have more of these once the ECPC looks into it in detail. Uh, there's no uh, green building practices proposed. Um, I'm sure that the ECPC will want to uh, recommend 
the um, construction, demolition, salvage. Um, I, I don't know yet how much impervious surface is proposed. And um, there is a, uh, a wooded riparian buffer that um, uh, is, will be next to a parking lot. And the issue there is that the, they are so close that they can't conceivably build a parking lot without encroaching into the riparian buffer. So we'll have to address that. And then the, um, the last one is, uh, Ty, uh, excuse me, Tyler Curry on Pete Ellis Drive. And um, we heard all about this one um, a while back, and it was approved in 2020. But now they want to make some uh, a few changes to um, the uh, district ordinance. This, this is a PUD. Mm -hmm. um, this is on a, a little over three acres, and <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's this, <clears throat> the pollen is getting to my throat. Uh, I'd like to blame it on the cicadas, though. Um, uh, it, 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 this uh, change is not very large. Um, they plan to uh, um, wrap the par whole parking garage with um, units now. And um, that will make a, uh, give them the opportunity to uh, make a larger courtyard. And um, um, they are going, they had uh, agreed to a green wall adjacent to um, uh, the, the neighboring apartment complex. But now, now that the apartments are going to be there, they are planning to do a cool roof. <laughs> so, um, um, that, oh, uh, another thing, they are planning to uh, have it certified as a Fitwell building. And that's a, a fairly new building certification and uh, it was developed by the um, U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the uh, General Service Services uh, Administration. And its main purpose, unlike a lot of the green building certifications we're used to, <clears throat> uh, its main purpose is to build the building that's healthy for humans. So there. Um, uh, th their whole certification concept is follows just human health um, uh, to have a health healthy building. So um, anyway, <clears throat> pardon me for my spring allergy voice here, but uh, that's all I've got for right now. No problem, Linda. Did anyone have any questions for Linda on the ECPC plan commission update? Okay, seeing none, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the right, outreach working group. Oh, sorry, Ben. Um, Linda, I have actually two questions. Um, the first one is, what is um, a green wall? Oh, um, glad you asked. It is a, a wall of a building that uh, has a, a system of one kind or another uh, whereby plants can grow in that system that hangs on the wall. Interesting. Cool. Uh, um, if, if you look it up, if you Google it, um, you'll see these beautiful, beautiful walls. Um, but the uh, couple that have been done in Bloomington so far have not been very successful. So from my point of view, um, I think it's a great trade-off to get rid of the green wall and have a cool roof. Cool. Um, and then my next question is, is this human certification building uh, more or less than like a LEED certification or something like that? Well, uh, really friendly. right. I don't know if I can say it's more or less, but it's, it, it works the same where they have um, uh, um, 
various categories uh, and then you, the, the builder, the building will get rated by um, a third party a trained person. And uh, depending on that score, they can have, um, uh, let's see, or is it stars? It's, it's one, two, three. And it seems like, it, I can't remember if it's stars or something. Anyway, there's three different ratings. Um, so they will, the building will be judged um, on uh, several different sectors like uh, walkability. Uh, is it, do, will it have um, um, low VOCs in the paint and, um, you know, carpet that doesn't emit VOCs and, and will they have uh, um, access to exercise and will there be plenty of natural light and things like that that all relate to human health rather than the building. They intend for their audience to be uh, workers from the new hospital. Um, I actually downloaded the FitWell score sheet. I'll send that out to the EC this evening, um, just so you can get a look at what type of uh, qualifications they're looking for when scoring those buildings, um, since it is relatively new but I downloaded that uh, for my own personal interest earlier while I was talking to Linda. So I'll send that to you all um, later tonight. Uh, any further questions for Linda? I'm not seeing any, so wonderful. Thank you, Linda. Okay, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> we'll move on then to our outreach working group. Um, organizer for that working group is Corey Ray. Corey, do you have um, anything to present to us this evening? Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of cover what we went over last meeting, and that's uh, we have a proposed event going forward where we're going to speak on the, or where we'd like to uh, have the topic be the future of Bloomington in context, you know, sustainability, green, you know, environmental, you know, future of us as a, you know, space here in our local community. And um, in our last meeting, we got a lot done in terms of, you know, we decided we wanted to have like a panel-esque event uh, open to the public uh, in person, but also with the capabilities to have it you know, recorded so that people could view it from home as well without getting out. And um, we wanted to invite up to four speakers to speak on a variety of subjects covering um, you know, the topic of you know, where we are going forward. And uh, regarding this, to determine who the speakers might be, we actually wanted to um, have members of the commission submit uh, the names of speakers and a reasoning slash bio for why they think they'd be a good fit and then have the commission as a whole vote on, you know, the four who they think would be the best and then the top four vote getters, you know, we would extend an invitation to, uh, unless two of the speakers were too similar. And then we would discuss it as a group to see, you know, if maybe we should uh, reconsider one for the sake of having a more diverse, you know, uh, more, uh, sorry, just more diverse, uh, yeah, different discussion there. And uh, we haven't got a specific date set in, except that we don't want to have it until after July. But we are working on those details and plan to have a lot more of them hammered out by the next meeting. But yeah, we would uh, like to request that within the next two week period that members do submit uh, potential speakers who they would like on the subject matter. Uh, and in that time when it's done, then we can get to the voting and send out some invitations, hopefully after we have a venue date and time more uh, hammered out. Wonderful. Anyone have any questions for Corey on the outreach report this evening? All right. Um, again, just encouraging everyone to think of potential speakers that they know of um, locally, in the state, um, maybe even outside who may be able to participate um, or be interested in participating. Um, again, the topic uh, is focused on Bloomington and where we have to be in the future to match the climate around us. So forward thinkers, um, people who do research on these types of things are really appreciated. Um, so if you have any connections that you think would be great, we'd really appreciate those. So thank you, Corey, for leading the outreach working group. Yeah, no problem. It's been fun. Great group of people. Wonderful. Now I'll move back on to biodiversity. Um, I am technically the organizer for biodiversity. I wasn't able to make the last meeting 
Um, I was traveling. I got stuck in traffic south of Indy. Um, so I couldn't make it. Um, so Ben, correct me if I, if I miss anything in my update. Um, let me just pull up my notes right here. So the outreach working group went over the connectivity plan. Um, they had no more edits for the plan and they mainly discussed how they were going to distribute it to the public. Um, they're planning on forwarding it to the information onto Bloomington as a whole, but they want to focus on neighborhoods that can provide the connectivity between the main areas of green space to try and close the wheel. Um, they'll contact businesses by email. Um, some members of the working group agreed to going door to door to flyer in different neighborhoods that are critical to the connectivity plan. Um, the idea of yard signs was thrown around, for example, um, to get people to participate, similar to how other neighborhood groups have yard signs uh, to indicate participation. Um, they also hope to attend other community events this summer to educate people about the plan. Um, and at the next meeting, they'll narrow down dates and a specific list of partners in the community that they hope will help us distribute the plan. Um, and their meetings will occur, if anyone's interested in joining at any point in time, um, every Sunday, every other Sunday uh, at 7 p.m. Um, does anyone have any questions or Ben, did I miss anything on that? No, I think you kind of talked about everything. Uh, I just want to say that Don sent me a great list of uh, possible partners that we can contact. And if anyone else has any more, please send me an email. Um, I think we have about, or I also looked up some others and I think we have about 17 right now. Uh, people that we can contact that would possibly be able to help out with the plan. Wonderful. Yep. So two pieces of homework for working groups for everyone this week is to think of speakers and to think of community partners for the connectivity plan um, and send those to Corey and Ben respectively. Um, anything else? Any other questions on biodiversity? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is old business. We have no old business. So there's no objection, we'll move on to new business. And I believe um, if there's no objection from the membership, Dave wanted to make a motion regarding our presentation from the chair of the Friends of Lake Monroe. Right, I'm, I move that we ask Andrew to write a letter to the mayor with a copy to the city council, uh, recommending that uh, they support the uh, coordinator as um, Sherry mentioned, and uh, both uh, both between the two grants and for the the grant, if the new grant comes through as well. So, uh, okay, that's my motion, and you can get the details of what needs to be in the letter from Sherry, probably. So, yes. Um, so there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Is there any debate or discussion before we move on to the uh, call in the question? All right, so before we go to the question, I'll just say I'll um, work with Sherry on that letter since it is a quick turnaround. We won't have time to send it to the full commission for review, but since we're agreeing on the intent of the letter, which is to support Friends of Lake Monroe and their quest to get that grant funding, uh, I don't think there will be any controversy about what's included in the letter. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. If there's no objection, move on to the question. Um, starting with Sam Armstrong. Yay. Matt. Yes. Don. I think Don's connection might still be bad. Daniel. Yes. I vote yes. Mike. Yes. Dave. Yes. Corey? Yes. And Dania? Yes. Excellent. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Um, I'll get that letter sent to Sherry. I'll work on it tonight slash tomorrow. Um, and then I'll send it to Sherry for her review. Um, and we'll work on getting that sent to the mayor's office and the city council ASAP. Um, is there... I see no new business on the agenda, so we'll move on to there's no objection commissioner announcements. Do any commissioners have any announcements they wish to give this evening? Matt? I was actually curious. I was just going to ask if, uh, and maybe I should have asked during the biodiversity working group, but where we were on the uh, Becky rewrite plan. Um, 
Linda, do you want to tackle that? I know you and I had briefly touched on Becky at some point. Sure. Um, ben is working on it right now, but it's the third thing on, on his list. He's um, uh, concentrating on um, uh, the outreach group and the biodiversity, but that doesn't take up every minute. So in between, he is um, uh, looking up things uh, for... Um, the Becky, and uh, he spent a lot of time on that this week, as a matter of fact. Um, reading the old one and thinking about uh, possibly changing uh, formats and looking in, he's made, made a big long list of um, things that uh, need to be updated. Uh, ben, why don't you hop in here? It's, it's, uh, it's your baby here, so you should be talking about it, not me. Yeah, so um, so far I've gone over three of the sections. I think it's uh, the land areas, energy, and the population section. And I've kind of just like underlined all the information that needs to be updated. Um, and I've made some notes on what we should include in the next Becky as well, uh, like invasive species or, or things like that. Um, I'm still on the, I finished the land area section, all the information that needs to be done. Um, so that should be up to date. Um, I just need, I think the new information that I would like to add, I also want to talk to everyone else about, um, the population section, uh, I'm still working through because there's a lot of numbers and stuff I, I need to, to continue to research. Um, and also like just math, I need to do myself. Um, and then hopefully by like, I would think maybe mid next week, I'll probably have all that information done for those three sections um that we can that we have updated not in sentences just like the updated information um and then i'll i guess move on to the next sections on, uh, and try to update those ones as well unless people have objections um i think the main intention of the becky or this is my interpretation of it is to uh help policymakers uh find facts quickly i, I would think um and i think a change in format might be necessary um, maybe everyone wants to take a look at what the Becky is now. Uh, I've made like a rough outline of a new version of it would look like, uh, for just the land area section of just like a different table of contents so that like people can look in the table of contents and see, um, oh, they're talking about, um, who's your national forest in the, in this section. So I can just go like right there to that page number. Um, versus in the old Becky, it's not labeled where that is, what they're when they're talking about that. So it'd just be a little bit more descriptive. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's been going on in my world. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Linda. Um, do we have any further questions on the Becky now that we're talking about it? What might now, be what is what does Becky stand for? Bloomington. I noticed. There we go. go ahead, Ben. Say again. Bloomington Environmental Quality Indicators. I see. Um, one thing that might be helpful, Ben, is if it's not too much work to clip the land use section, for example, um, and then clip your proposed updated format that you have outlined and just send it to us. Um, so that we can just look and see what you're thinking versus what's already been done. Um, and then if anyone has any suggestions, they can pop in with those um, as the, at, before we get too ingrained in actually, you know, enacting those outlines, um, try to get some commu some commission feedback on that format um, just at the beginning of the process, I think would be helpful. But if it's too much work, I completely understand. Um, you're a busy guy. No, that's completely fine. Uh, just like right now, I'm uh, mainly focused on just updating the information um, of, or just getting the information uh, like put aside to like write okay. about it in the future. Um, but I can easily send out like the format that I made for the land area section. That's not, not a trouble at all. Okay, perfect. Cause I think that would just be a good way to loop in some additional commission feedback into it uh, at this early stage. Um, anything else on the Becky before we move forward to commissioner announcements? Seeing none, are there any commissioners who wish to give an announcement this evening? If not, I have a quick one. Um, 
Next Thursday, just to keep the uh, commission in the loop, I will be speaking to the parking commission in town um, as a private citizen, not as chair, but as a private citizen, um, urging them to consider uh, eliminating parking minimum requirements for residential developments in Bloomington. The idea being that we currently have a list of parking minimums, how many parking spaces must be required per bedroom or per dwelling unit for new residential developments. Um, currently excluded from those requirements are single family homes, some duplexes and live work dwellings. Um, however, um, other developments such as student housing developments, for example, have to provide at least half the number of parking spaces, for example, that they have bedrooms um, for student housing specifically. Um, this would eliminate that requirement. So it would enable uh, developers who are building closer to downtown or closer to campus or closer to big neighborhood hubs like village centers. It would enable them to build more densely, um, which helps lower uh, housing costs and development costs, um, and also in, encourages a vehicle-free way of life um, encourages people to use, if they do have a vehicle, to use park and walk models of transportation instead of parking um, next to their building. Um, also encourages, you know, more pedestrian safety, uh, more street parking, which slows down traffic. So um, there's a ton of benefits I could get into for hours about it. It's a really interesting topic to me. Um, but uh, I will be presenting to the Parking Commission to urge them to do that next Thursday if anyone's interested in peeping in on that presentation. If it goes well, I anticipate giving um, a presentation on the same topic to the EC in the future at some point. Um, but that's my uh, commissioner report. Are there any others before we move on to adjournment? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I just want to say that we got our first $200 for Eco Heroes the other day. So that's kind of exciting news. Love to hear it. Thank you to uh, Ben for all the work he's done on reaching out to Eco Heroes funders. Um, it's a big project that's taken multiple interns in the past. And he's been taking it on flawlessly. So we thank him for all his work on that. It's still early. <laughs> There's still time to get tired, trust me. Any further commissioner announcements or a motion? Just do it. Second. I'll take that as a motion. All right. We are adjourned at uh, 724 p.m. Thank you all for this uh, meeting, and I'll talk to you later.